everyone, and thank you for joining us for another Wednesday Wisdom. Uh, these we're bringing to you every single week on topics that we know that our businesses and our community are very relevant right now and uh, what you want to know about. And we have a great panel with us again today, some industry experts, and our session today will be from bricks and mortar to clicks and order. So really that online presence that we know is so critical right now and ways uh, to do that in the best way possible. So thank uh, all of our panelists for being here with us today and everyone for tuning in. Um, and just a couple housekeeping items before we get started today. We uh, do have all of you on mute uh, during the event. If you have any questions, uh, please raise your hand um, in the chat. And if time allows, we'll go ahead and get to those questions as well. Please add your contact info in that chat um, if you wish to be contacted by any of our panelists today. Okay. Uh, so that way they can connect with you afterwards. Um, and that chat is also downloadable for you to reference later. Uh, the chat can also be used to share links or documents. So um, if you need any info as we go through this, we'll also be using it for that purpose. And if you have any technical difficulties during this, please email um, Michaela um, at events at wilkesfair.org and we'll be able to help you out through this as well. Uh, in the event, we are also going to live stream on Facebook. Uh, so that will be available for people to view all throughout if you choose to share this and we hope you do. Uh, so with that, I want to welcome our industry leaders that we have with us today. Uh, so Dan Kimbra is the owner of Parks Multimedia, and he's going to talk to us about getting online and building your site. Sam O'Connell, Creative Director at Cole Creative, and how to design um, that site and great aspects to help you do that. Mike Flaherty, Senior SEO and PPC Specialist at ENX2 Marketing. He's going to talk to us a lot about SEO and online presence. And Mara Smith, Senior Vice President of Marketing at Pepper Jam. And she's going to be telling us about marketing and driving traffic to your site. Uh, so I'm just going to hand it right over to Dan. He's going to share his screen with us and he's going to start uh, kicking us off and telling us about uh, getting, uh, getting online and building that site. All right, and we should be good to go. No, I just lost it, didn't I? Sorry. Wrong screen. There we go. Is that the right one? All right. So, all right, my name is Dan Kimber with Park Multimedia. Uh, and today we're going to talk about the technical aspect of getting your business online um, and the idea of what it's going to take on the back end as far as what you're going to need to purchase and the different things that you're going to need um, to know about as far as setting your business up. And what is that? All right. And so, we're going to talk about what things you should prep. Um, ahead of time to make sure that you have so that once you start this process, you can move through it rather quickly. Um, a couple of terms and things that you should know about as far as um, things that are going to come up later on, you're going to hear today, and as well as your, uh, your things that you'll see um, while you're going through the process. Uh, four best options, which are really sort of the quickest options for you to get your website up and running. And then one alternative that if all of this seems overbearing uh, and something that you can't do. There are still ways that you can sell items online uh, without sort of building a website. Uh, and we're going to show one alternative that'll get you to that. So, um, things that you should be getting ready. Um, I'm not going to read the whole list. You can sort of go there and read it. But the idea is that you want to have these things in place ahead of time so that as you start to build your site, you're not sort of looking for them or trying to create them. Um, get them done ahead of time. And so uh, you connect with local photographers um, that you can send products to to get photos done. Um, you want to make sure that you've taken care of your descriptions. Sam's going to talk about sort of the story idea and sort of how you sort of tell the story of your business. And so you want to have those things ready as you go down the line. The one big one that I want to point out is the idea of the pickup or delivery process. Given sort of the time that we're in right now, it's really important to customers to know that if they're, you're deli if they're delivering to you, um, that you have contactless, contactless delivery or what that process is gonna be like. And if they're coming to pick it up from you, what that process is gonna be as well. So make sure that um, on the site, whether you have one or if you're building one going forward, that you lay out lay that process out so that they understand what that process is gonna be like so that you can build that trust with these customers going forward. Uh, a couple terms and things that you should know about. Um, when buying um, and setting up a website, you have to buy a domain and a hosting plan. Your domain is just the address. So for Park Multimedia, it's parkmultimedia.com. And so you have to have that address to sort of point to a server. But once uh, someone's pointed to a server, something has to be there for a website to be built on, and that's the hosting plan. 
So when you're going through and looking to build out your websites, um, depending on the program that you use to build it with, you may see them listed separately as the domain and as the hosting plan or to be bundled, but you need both of those items. So just buying a domain won't get you your website. And many places have um, it set up so that your first year is gonna be 99 cents, sort of like the photo back here from GoDaddy, um, but it's gonna balloon after that first year. So just make sure that you sort of planned ahead, um, buy a couple of years so that you have it and you're not worried about renewing it every time it comes around. Um, the term CMS is just a content management system and it's whatever you're using to build out your website. So whether it's WordPress, you're using Squarespace, um, there's other ones that exist, but it's a, just a visual app that allows you to drag and drop and uh, fill in the information so you don't have to write the code yourself to build out a website. Um, you wanna make sure that your website is secure as well. So one of the things that you're gonna see is an option to buy an SSL certification uh, certificate. If you don't have one, um, the image you see behind there where it says this connection is not private, Google is down ranking or flat out trying to get people to not go to sites that are collecting money uh, and credit card information that aren't secure. So make sure that part of that process is securing your website so that it's the HTTPS and you don't have to worry about telling people to type that in. If they look up your website and it's secure, the secure version is what will show up and you won't have to run the risk of people not being able to get to you. Um, and then the last thing is to making sure, making sure that you have a responsive or a site that's set for mobile. The idea being that when someone's using their cell phone or a tablet, which a lot of people are doing nowadays, to look for things, your site resizes and is still functional in that format. Not doing so will also help uh, force you to be knocked lower on your Google ranking. So make sure that you've got, uh, however you build out your site, it does it that it's responsive as well. Um, and all the options that I'm gonna show you will give you a preview to let you sort of see how those things are done also, all right? Um, so moving to the different options that exist, um, GoDaddy, um, majority of people have heard of GoDaddy. It's, uh, it has two versions, sort of two options you can go with. You can sort of build your site out individually where you buy all the separate pieces. So you're gonna buy your domain, you're gonna buy the hosting, your SSL certification. What's nice about that option is that they're all listed separately. So if once this is all over, you decide you don't need as much hosting or you don't need bits and pieces, you can add, or you need more, you can take away or add to those. Um, and it allows you to sort of install WordPress as the, the CMS that you're gonna use to build it. What's nice about WordPress, is, I mean, GoDaddy is that it's one of the industry standards and so uh, their, help, their tech and help support is really amazing. And you can either build it out, like I said, using WordPress and build it yourself, or they have templates like the ones on the screen here where they, you can use the template to drag and drop and build your website uh, so that it looks like a lot of the other ones that are around. Um, the options are really nice um, and sort of modern so that you have that as a way to go. GoDaddy, your hosting is, you're gonna wanna again buy hosting. Um, that's gonna probably, I think it runs you about 70 to $80 a year, plus you're looking at your domain name, which for the first year is gonna be um, 99 cents, but will balloon after that. But with GoDaddy, if you have someone who can help you build it, it's a great option for building out a website. Squarespace um, is going to be an all-in-one option. So when you go to Squarespace for free, you can build your website, but it won't be live. So you can go through and test and try building your own website, use the CMS that's available on the website, pick a layout theme, upload all the things that I talked about as far as getting ready. And if you like what you have, you can go ahead and purchase it and that becomes your site. The one of the downsides to Squarespace is that they have your site now. Everything that you've built and done is there. If you go to move from Squarespace, it's a little more expensive to leave Squarespace and do something else. But you've got an all-in-one e-commerce option so that you can start selling things almost immediately and go forward. One of the nice things about Squarespace is that their analytics are baked in on the back end. So when you're looking at SEO and all these other things, you'll have access to all of those things going forward. Um, Wix is another one, which is a drag and drop website that allows you to build your site. Um, it's not as robust as Squarespace, but it still gets the job done. Um, it can get you up and online rather quickly. Um, it's, you can all have to buy a domain name. So you could have parkmultimedia.wix.com. So it can save you a little money in that aspect, but I would still suggest buying your domain. Uh, but it's another one that's out there that uh, a lot of people use. Uh, when I talked, I had students build their portfolio sites in this. So it's very user-friendly, easy to get up and running with, um, and you can be online in less than a day. And then the last option uh, I'm gonna talk about is Google. It's functional. It's not gonna be the prettiest website in the world, but it's functional. Um, it has e-commerce built in through Google. If you have a Google My Business listing, you can pull in information from that to help build out your site. 
Um, and you have Google's analytics baked in as well. And so it won't be the world's prettiest website, but you can get up and running. It will cost you as well though, because you're gonna have to buy a domain um, and sort of part of their hosting plan. It's one of the cheaper options and probably the easiest um, because it's doing it right through your Google My Business listing. So that's another option um, that's available. With all four of these, again, you're buying a domain, you're gonna be buying the hosting, uh, and then you're gonna build out your site, adding all those elements into it. And so there is gonna be cost up front for it, but you'll have a website and for under $200, you can have your website up and running and guaranteed for the next two to three years, which is a good thing to have. Um, and then reassess down the line if you want to. And then the one last alternative I wanna go over, um, Square is an online credit card processor uh, and they can build a store for you. So you won't have a website, but you will have a URL that you can direct people to, they, they can buy things. So just like the other ones, you can upload product descriptions and product photos, build out an entire site, and because they're a credit card processor, the financial end of it, as far as the e-commerce, is all taken care of. Um, you can embed this into a site as well, but if the idea of building a website out is just something that you really don't want to do, Square offers a, a new option, um, and they're changing their online store. So if you do it now, you'll get the new online store. Um, and again, it has all the functionality of an e-commerce site built into it, just not an actual website. You're buying things through Square, uh, and you can send the link out to your customers that way. So. Um, I know it was quick and sort of a uh, quick way to run through it all, but if you have questions, feel free to give me a call or an email. Uh, there are plenty of other uh, ways that you can go out and build websites, but those four are the ones that are most used. And again, the easiest to get you up and running that if you started after this webinar, you could be online by the end of the day, if not tomorrow. So thank you all very much. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dan. I think that was really a, a great way for people to get up and running. And um, I know that you put your contact info out there as well. So please feel free to reach out to Dan um, if that's the stage that you're at. We wanted to really give a great blueprint today of from the beginning to when you're actually, you know, getting out there and marketing your site. So Dan, thank you. We appreciate that. And again, interact with us in the chat if you have any questions for Dan. Now I'm going to toss it over to Sam O'Connell from Cold Creative. He's going to talk to us a little bit about um, design aspects of that site. For sure, thanks, Lindsay. I'm just gonna go ahead and share my screen now. All right. So today we're going to talk about the design aspect of your website. Now, Dan really covered the basis really well of how to set up your site. And as you can tell from the way he spoke, it's easier than ever to go ahead and get yourself set up online, especially with e-commerce platforms. There's a lot of options and uh, really there's no wrong option when you're, if you're trying to get something set up really quick, especially during these times. What I want to talk about is the art of storytelling and how to get consumers or visitors to your website to make the decision to buy. Um, it's a really competitive market on e-commerce, so you're really competing with ultimate convenience of something like Amazon who can deliver as soon as the same day. So really, you have to convince any type of visitor why they should buy from you as opposed to potentially a more convenient option. And I think that really comes down to storytelling. Uh, as a millennial, I really want to feel like I connect with um, the business or person that I'm purchasing from. And sometimes that connection, uh, based on the story that I'm told or the way I'm led through the website is the deciding factor of whether I'm going to buy this product here or, or at an Amazon or something else. Uh, so I think storytelling has a big part of that. A little bit about me is my background is in narrative filmmaking before I got into the marketing game. And I really take that same approach to marketing. Uh, and web development even. So the same way you would write a script, which has a beginning, a middle, and an end, and a climax that really hooks you, you wanna lead any visitors to you through your website using those same methods. You want them to be engaged with the story and um, excited to make that purchase. And uh, so there's some very simple tactics that you can use to, to give the user that experience. So we're gonna go through some of that today. So you wanna create a flow to your website where you, your viewers have the greatest experience um, and that starts really on the home page. And you're really gonna start by creating a site map. Uh, if you're creating this website on your own, um, this is kind of a look under the hood at what we do at Cole Creative. And uh, you know, obviously feel free to take any of these steps and I think that they really um, 
smooth the process of creating a website and getting it online. Um, and it's going to be the best version of your website. So you want to have a brainstorm with anybody who's involved to say, what kind of content is going to go on this website and uh, where is it going to go and how are people going to interact with it? So whether it's media, pictures, videos, content, you really want to brainstorm what, what you're trying to create and what you're trying to launch. So this is an example of a site map. It's a site map that we have used at Cole Creative for our own personal website. And a lot of you who've used a website will recognize that that's just the navigation bar. Um, you're gonna write that out on paper, use a spreadsheet, use anything. You just wanna make sure that you know what, um, where the, what the pages are, the main pages for people to visit, and you wanna write that out in completion. You can't really start designing your website unless you know exactly what you're making and where you want people to go. So you have your about section, what can be included in that. And, and ours is meet the team. Uh, you, can learn about our, you can learn more about us, our company and our processes in our blog. So that kind of fits in there. Press, anytime we're in the press or news, we're there, uh, you know, that, that, that's about us. That's kind of who we are. And then recognition, awards, so on and so forth. So that's kind of how we go about creating a site map. And like I said, you can do that very easily through just writing it down on paper or, or using any other kind of platform that's available to you. We use Google Docs a lot in Office, it's free, and it's a really dynamic platform to, uh, with, with a host of options. So uh, another thing we do in the office, that's our uh, web developer, Travis, there. Uh, he thinks he looks like a turtle in that picture, but I think he looks, he looks fine. Um, and we've been drawing out our websites really simply on a whiteboard. So, you know, we write out what we want to see there. So if there's a video header, we draw a rectangle and write it in there. This really provides a visual map of what this homepage and any subsequent page will look like. Um, it really makes, when you're in these drag and drop builders, it makes the process that much easier if you know kind of the basics of what you want to appear. Um, you know, even if it's just a rudimentary whiteboard drawing, take a picture of that and save it. and Sometimes it's fun just to look at that before and after picture of what you had in your head, how you wanted it to look, and then how it ended up being. It's, it's pretty cool sometimes how close you can get it. So, what? Oops. That's, uh, anyway. Uh, a, a kind of a last step you can do. Um, it's optional, but you can actually design your site in its entirety and a uh, platform like Photoshop, Illustrator, or InDesign. You can start to insert copy that you've created images that you've gathered or taken and you can get a real look at what the um, you know your website's going to be like we always do this at co-creative where uh, we design a site before we even start developing and we get a sign off with our collaborators so that way it makes the design process that much easier and they can kind of get a, they, they know almost exactly what their website's going to look like before any time is spent developing for this image i was trying to find something like a tool belt with paintbrushes in it or something like that. So I looked up designer tool, tool belt and, and that's, uh, there's a whole world of designer tool belts that I didn't even know about. You know, so if, if that strikes any of your fancies. So we are living in a visual world. Um, people want to engage with content that has value and is interesting to look at. So um, you should take time in writing the copy of your website Again, we use Google Docs and we create a document with all the content that's gonna be in your website. From a mission statement to about the website, you just really wanna spend some time on that copy. Even outsource it if you need to, if you're not the best at writing things. Uh, enlist a friend who's a good writer or outsource the, the writing of that copy where they can just quickly interview you and hear what's in your mind and then put that into a, a sentence or a paragraph that's strong and best represents your business and what service or product you're selling. Provide visuals whenever possible because, like I said, we're a visual world. We want to see things. We want to build that trust by seeing what the product is, who's providing it, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, obviously, we're in quarantine, so it may not be the best time to get a professional photographer uh, to come and photograph your products. But use a, a phone that has takes good quality pictures. Um, if you have an iPhone, you could mess around with different types of focuses and, and really capture your product in the best light possible. That's it another way to just build that trust that will be the buying decision between them purchasing that product from you or something like Amazon. Like I said, you're competing against Amazons of the world. So you really need to outline how and why you're different as efficiently as possible. 
you always want to get feedback from people throughout the process. Um, and you want to send it to friends, family, people who are going to be rough on you and read your copy and, you know, trying it on different devices. You'll probably have that family member who still uses Internet Explorer. It's important that, um, you know, you get that feedback from all levels. I was looking up people using computers and I kept finding this gentleman. Uh, he's one of the leading models, I, I, I guess, at uh, people using computers. So that's, that's a fun little journey that I went on. Yeah, just make sure it looks good on all, 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 all platforms and across all spectrums of people. And then uh, feel free to connect with me. I'm Sam at CoCreative.com. Connect with CoCreative on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all the platforms. And uh, feel free to ask me any questions. It's been nice talking to you today. Great. Thank you so much, Sam. And again, anyone that has questions for Sam, he also gave us his contact info. So please list them in that chat. And at the end of the session, again, if we have some time, we're going to re revisit those and we'll get them out to our panelists. So thank you, Sam. So now that we've built our site, uh, we've designed it and we have some great aspects in there. Now we really want to see how we can drive people to that and get them to interact with those websites. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Mara Smith from Pepper Jam. And she's going to talk to us about marketing and driving traffic. Thank you, Lindsay. Just sharing here. Okay, so good morning, everybody. My name is Mara Smith. I am the Chief Marketing Officer for Pepper Jam. Uh, in case you don't know, Pepper Jam is an affiliate marketing technology platform. Uh, and ultimately, what we do is we power relationships between retailers and brands with third party websites all with the intent of driving traffic and sales online. Um, my role at Pepper Jam, um, from what you can probably tell my title is marketing. And so what that means is that I'm responsible for driving traffic and sales for Pepper Jam um, with you know, conversions primarily taking place on our own website. So with that, I thought I would share a few um, basic best practices today. Uh, once you have your website up and running, what you can do to get additional eyes on your site. Before we talk about the specific uh, leverage you can pull to drive traffic to your website, I wanted to just first very simply consider the circumstances and uh, this unique time that we're all in. Um, just as Dan suggested early on in his presentation, before you start marketing your site and driving traffic to it, you need to sort of take an inventory and think about all of the practical and sort of innovative elements um, about your business uh, that will ultimately play into the messaging either on your website or in your marketing um, that, that you're initiating to drive users to that site. Um, so think about, just for a second, sort of the practical considerations. So first, are you making adjustments to how customers can place orders with your business? Um, whether you're implementing e-commerce uh, and, and transactional e-commerce ordering on your website, obviously that's something that you're going to want to push, but depending on the business um, you're in or the industry that, that you play in, you might not have that luxury of offering uh, online purchasing direct on your site. So in those situations, perhaps um, you know, you're offering uh, orders to be taken via phone uh, versus online take inventory of those changes that are going to be important to customers on the ordering front. Additionally, uh, if you're primarily, primarily um, you know, a store location and you have new hours of operation as a result of uh, this unique time, you're going to want to uh, make note of that. Or conversely, if you're closed as a result of you know, the governor's orders, um, you'll, need to, you'll need to make sure that you advise your customers that you, know, you are uh, temporarily closed. Beyond that, if you're a business that offers um, different delivery or pickup options, um, it's important that you, you know, get a handle on those changes so that you can properly articulate that information to your customer base. So whether it's delivery that you own or delivery that you outsource to say DoorDash or Grubhub, um, or conversely, if you're offering pickup options that you didn't previously offer like curbside pickup or contactless pickup, um, just make note of that so you can get all that information corralled and ready for uh, marketing purposes. Uh, finally, if you are still open um, 
and have a store, it's advisable that you educate your customers on the social distancing measures that you might have implemented within your physical uh, storefront. So whether that's, you know, tape to keep people six feet apart or greater, um, obviously advising people to wear masks. Um, these are the practical elements that you'll, you'll want to have uh, in your arsenal. Conversely, uh, there's the, the innovative side of things. Um, so this has become, while it's a unique time, it's also an opportune time to um, message to your customers about the new products or services that you have to offer. I've seen a lot of creativity in uh, the local community where businesses are now offering DIY kits uh, to make donuts or pasta making kits. Um, I've seen businesses collaborate where, you know, pizza delivery services are able to sell uh, products that are from local bakeries um, just to support each other in this, you know, unique time. Beyond that, um, outside of the physical product offering, there are businesses that are centered wholly on um, leveraging events, uh, virtual events primarily, to continue to offer the services to their customer base and prospective customers. Um, so whether it's you know live streaming workouts or if you're offering virtual coaching um, or perhaps you're offering just you know reductions on gift card sales, these events are are important to help you stand out from a marketing perspective when you're ready to you know drive traffic to your site. And finally, you know, consider the philanthropic side or the cause marketing initiatives, um, and and use this as a tool to help make announcements about uh, volunteer efforts or donations that your business is making, um, you know, during this unique time. Okay, so once you've considered you know, the circumstances and the information that you'll want to convey to your customer audience, it's important that you consider your uh, digital presence or your digital footprint. And you can think of this as um, your businesses or your brand's profile online. These are all of the, uh, the areas that contain information about your business or about your brand. It's essentially like virtual real estate uh, that you can control. When you think about the areas, these are just you know, four key areas that I wanted to outline. The first is what you own. Obviously, that's your website that you built. If you are a little bit more of an advanced um, user, maybe you have a mobile application. And these are content destinations that are wholly curated and um, owned by your business. Um, but then there are some other levers that you can pull to further um, drive awareness and traffic online for your business. Um, so obviously everybody is familiar with social media. Um, this is an ever growing list, but um, you know, these are channels that I'll share with you in a little bit. Users are spending more time on and they become uh, essentially a, an advertising destination for your business, particularly important when you launch your website, you'll want to announce this to your users and your, your followers on social media networks. Additionally, um, there are other destinations on the web for which you can drive traffic to your website. These are called directories or review sites, many that you'll be familiar with, um, but some that you, know, you may, might not be so familiar with. There are <clears throat> directories and review sites that are well known, like um, Google, Yelp, Zillow, but there are hundreds if not thousands of more niche directories depending on uh, the industry in which you play. So for example, if you're a service provider, Angie's List can be a destination for which you can advertise your website and your business. Uh, if you're a wedding vendor, The Knot is a destination, or if you offer home services, Thumbtack is also a great resource. And finally, um, once you've mastered the art of you know, marketing your business in these, um, in these locations, you can then start to advance and focus your efforts on uh, paid advertising. Um, whether it's uh, paid search or pay-per-click advertising, uh, display media or um, paid advertising through social media. Um, these are all also levers that you can pull to drive traffic and eyes to your website. Okay, so once you have your website up and running, um, what I thought I would share is, you know, make sure that you're highlighting 
uh, your new e-commerce strategy. So whatever it is, if you're selling products online, if you're offering streaming services or virtual services, um, it's important to ensure that these changes are prominent on your site. So um, make sure that this is messaged on the homepage or in hero images and wherever possible, use CTAs to encourage the user to um, take action. A CTA is a call to action and it's ultimately a button um, or some sort of uh, draw that will entice the user to um, click to, you know, uh, download a piece of content, make a purchase online or some other action. On the website, if you have the ability, I would encourage that you uh, implement social sharing buttons so that your customers can share the products and services that you're offering direct from the site. This will help drive traffic and get you exposure to uh, more eyeballs than uh, you would have otherwise. If you have a customer email list already, um, definitely take the time to deploy an announcement that you, know, you have online shopping to offer or that you've deployed a website. Uh, depending on the changes to your business. I have an example here of a local uh, business, Shoes Boutique. Um, when uh, COVID hit, Tara uh, took the time to actually uh, stand up and uh, launch an e-commerce uh, shopping website for shoes so that customers could continue to enjoy uh, the shoes experience online. So what she did was she sent out an email uh, to her customers making that an announcement that online shopping was here. If you have that ability, please do so. Um, it will help drive more users to the site and spread the word. Uh, in addition, as you build out your product inventory or as you offer you know, different promotions, it's important that you keep this consistency in sending regular uh, newsletters or messages to your customer base um, so that they know, you know about all of the great things that you have to offer. If you're more advanced and you're, and you're already leveraging SMS or text-based messaging, use that as another channel to drive traffic to your website um, and continue to spread the word across your existing customer base um, who will in turn spread the word for you. And it can't hurt to just ask your friends and family to Sam's point, uh, have them check out your website, but also encourage them to um, you know, spread the word on social media and share it with their social networks and friends so that you can drive more awareness and traffic to your website. One of the things I mentioned earlier was taking like an inventory of what were the changes that have been, that your business has, um, has uh, implemented as a result of COVID-19. So um, maybe you're not offering online ordering, but maybe you've had adjustments. The website is a great destination to um, make mention of those changes, whether it's changes to your hours, um, or if you perhaps you know, are not able to get to your business location, you might wanna consider taking down the phone number and, and swapping that out with an email address so that customers can reach you um, on the regular. Um, also, it's wise and timely to highlight your response to COVID-19 on your website. So talk about you know, what you're doing to keep your employees safe and the measures that you're implementing to keep customers safe as well while they can continue to enjoy um, the products and services that you have to offer. These are just two examples I found for local websites. Uh, we have got Three Dog Bakery um, and The Canning House. So Three Dog Bakery looks like they made some adjustment to their hours. So they just made that change right on their website, notating that these are temporary hours, likely in part due to the uh, stay at home and, and quarantine order. And then we have a little bit more of a, um, an advanced example here with the Canning House, who has taken measures to actually implement e-commerce um, ordering directly on their site. Um, they've used this as an opportunity to really innovate and uh, offer a provision store, which is uh, really like raw, uh, food materials that some, some consumers have not been able to access uh, for high demand items like dairy or produce or protein. And what they've done is they've tapped their supply chain to offer uh, these provision baskets or, or boxes um, that customers can order directly on the website. Um, so they've implemented that on their site and then made sure that the CTAs and messaging are prominent within the hero images right on the site. All right, so uh, social media, I, 
it's probably no surprise uh, that social media usage is on the rise. I wanted to just share these statistics because um, I thought they were important and led credence to the fact of how much social, social media usage is increasing during this time. So on the left-hand chart, what you'll see is um, a view of the social media users in the United States who believe that they uh, will end up using social media more as a result of being confined at home uh, due to the coronavirus. Um, you can see across nearly every social network, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, um, you know, the increases from social media users are just uh, 10 times, 20 times what they typically uh, would be using. So just take note of the fact that as people are home, uh, they're confined to their these spaces, they're going to resort to looking to social media or other entertainment, um, at-home entertainment services uh, to spend their time. The chart on the right shows um, how Facebook and Instagram specifically have, uh, have changed as a result of interactions um, since February and March as a result of COVID-19. So you can see that the number of interactions, which an interaction could be a comment, a share, a like, has just dramatically risen as a result of um, users inc being increasingly at home and on these platforms. And this is good news for you guys because as you implement your websites and e-commerce strategies, this becomes a channel that's an opportunity for you uh, to, to reach these highly engaged, active audiences. Um, so I'm going to talk about organic social media because organic means free. It means you don't have to pay for this advertising. Um, many of you are probably, you know, using these channels already. Uh, but just a, a few like best practices and tips um, when it comes to social media. Your message, uh, first and foremost, it needs to be relevant. Uh, you need to be mindful to the current times. Uh, to a certain degree, you need to be empathetic uh, to the changes that we are all uh, currently undergoing. Um, so consider that in any of your social media posts, you don't want to appear tone deaf um, and just make sure that whatever messages that you're, you're conveying and deploying, they are um, not only relevant, but it's providing uh, value to the end user, whether it's your customer or your, your prospective customer. Ultimately, you wanna build that trust with them, and that means deploying content that uh, they appreciate and will engage with. Um, so as you use social media as a channel to market your website, just consider that, and know that simply posting your website um, link or address is not sufficient enough. People are spending more time on these platforms, and so it becomes even more of a challenge to cut through the clutter and reach somebody and engage them in a way um, that they, you know, that's, that's different and unique. When you're posting, think about the medium. Um, I would always encourage that you vary the medium of your posts. So don't resort to using the same photos over and over. Uh, try to vary it up and include video where possible. You could also provide meaningful content in the form of articles or how-to guides, tutorials, recipes. You can pull your users to try and engage with them. Um, make it interactive and a two-way street um, that users will get value out of. You also need to consider the timing and frequency. For some businesses, it might make sense to post every day, maybe multiple times a day. But for other businesses, perhaps, you know, that cadence will vary to every, you know, couple of days um, uh, or less. Now, think about the time of day for each of the platforms on which you post. Uh, Facebook tends to have the best engagement on Thursdays and Fridays between 1 and 3 p.m. Eastern, whereas Twitter tends to have greater engagement weekdays between 12 and 6. If you think about platforms like LinkedIn, which are more business or B2B oriented, these platforms have the best engagement Tuesday through Thursday uh, between 7 and 8 a.m. and 5 to 6 p.m. when the workday has, you know, ended or, or is just getting started. Um, Probably, you know, a pretty common sense uh, that everybody should use hashtags uh, where possible. Hashtags are a mechanism to help your business or your brand be discovered uh, when people go to search for certain terms in these uh, social networks. 
Um, if you're using those hashtags, it will improve the chances that your business and your post will show in the search results uh, for that user. I've got just a quick couple of examples of unique content from local businesses. Again, uh, the Westmoreland Club, they put out uh, a post in March uh, encouraging users uh, to find different ways to do things with families. So a great resource for parents of young children who are struggling to find ways uh, to keep their kids entertained. Um, and then conversely, we've got Leverage Fitness Studio. They've been offering uh, workouts on their Facebook and Instagram pages every day, uh, providing value to the end user that they can capitalize on. They're also doing streaming workouts every other day uh, to continue to keep that presence and engagement with their, with their users. A couple of other examples, and I'll wrap it up here. Um, I just saw from my own social activity, these local businesses doing a great job to message uh, the changes that they've implemented uh, for their business. So Tomasinos is using social media to notify users that they're offering curbside pickup, that they also offer DoorDash. Um, if you have a website, this is a great place to plug your website in a relevant post. Um, we've got Matterns Floral advertising on Instagram. They're offering um, delivery for, for flowers, which is a great option for Mother's Day. If you can't you know, physically get somewhere to get a gift. And then businesses like Humphreys offering curbside pickup for toys and edu educational items for children. All right, last but not least here, and I'll wrap it up. Um, the last thing I wanted to cover was online directories. So this is another lever you can pull to drive traffic to your business. Uh, probably the most well-known one is uh, Google My Business. Uh, when you go to a search engine and uh, you type in a business name, um, often what you'll see is this image that you see here on the right for Pepper Jam. It's essentially the profile of your business within Google. It contains information about uh, your, your business name, hours, website, phone number, et cetera. Uh, and it will, it will appear directly within the search results um, when a user searches within Google. If you've not created your listing for uh, your business in Google, you just go to business.google.com and you can claim ownership uh, and then start to build out your profile to make sure that you know, your website's included there and use that as another lever uh, to just continually drive traffic uh, to that destination. There are some local and niche directories. Uh, there's another example here on the right of the Times Leader. They're offering a uh, directory for local businesses that are still open uh, during this quarantine time. Um, it's really simple. All you have to do is uh, visit the page and then submit a form with all of your business's information, um, letting them know that you are still open and operating. It's also a great opportunity for you to plug your website and get more users um, uh, to that destination. So with that, um, I'd love to continue the conversation. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email address is here on the screen and I'm sure will be shared in the chat. And with that, um, I'm gonna pass it back to Lindsay. Thank you so much, Mara. And I really just wanted to highlight too, I love how you really covered uh, how important it is to share your strategy and your story right now through COVID-19. Uh, that's something that I know we've had so many businesses reach out to us about and how do I get out there, what I'm doing and what I'm implementing. Um, so I think all of what you just talked about is speaking directly to a lot of those questions and how vital it is right now for our business community. So uh, everything that you've shared with us, um, obviously super helpful information and I hope our businesses can really take those tips and utilize that and also um, you know, share it with us here at the Chamber. We now every Friday um, and also within our, our, our member website and our portal have been sharing what you're all doing. So please continue to do that. We'd love to help you share that message even further. Um, so thank you so much for covering on all that, Mara, because I think right Absolutely. now that's exactly what um, we need to just be focusing on and helping our businesses to get as much of that presence as they can. Um, so with that, I'm also gonna now turn it over to Mike from ENX2, and he's gonna talk to us about SEO and increasing that online presence even further. Uh, I was muted for a second, okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay, and I am Michael Flaherty, Senior SEO Specialist from NX2, and co-presenting with me is Jeff Miro, who is my partner in crime, who is also a Senior SEO Specialist. So first off, we wanna see 
if your website is SEO friendly, as this GIF uh, shows, and kind of what Sam went over as well. Uh, you want your site design to be hand in hand with SEO because they come hand in hand. Uh, a website should be designed with SEO in mind. So what is SEO anyway? SEO is one of, if not the most important parts of a digital marketing strategy. It ensures the house website is in order, can be crawled and indexed by search engines, and most importantly, that your website shows up to searchers organically, whether it be Google, Bing, Yahoo, DuckDuckGo, or any other search engine. So an important factor in SEO is keyword research. It's the process in which you choose a keyword for the specific page you are optimizing and collect data to verify it is being searched. Below is an example of one of our pages that we optimized. So here you can see uh, SEO services Wilkesbury. We rank number one for this service. And this is something you want your category pages to show up on Google or your products that you're trying to get ranked. And as you can see, all of our competitors but one are ranked for this specific service, SEO services. Now, being ranked for your home page isn't necessarily bad. It's just that <clears throat> searchers might bounce out of your site if they, they don't find what they're looking for initially. So you want them, you want the click depth to be three clicks or less. Uh, especially for an e-commerce platform. So you, something I, I kind of failed to, to put in the PowerPoint, but you want your website laid out homepage, uh, your category pages is one click, subcategory pages is two clicks, and your products three clicks if you're an e-commerce platform. And bottom right here, we have our local pack. So digital marketing agency, this is GeoTarget. I did a search for Wilkesbury since I'm in Hanover, but it comes up here. Uh, we rank number one and Sam and the Cole team are doing something, something good because they're number three as well. And that's something you want your business to optimize for as well. So with that said, you wanna make sure your keywords fit the products you sell and you wanna match your user search intent as the GIF on the side here shows Bart Simpson. And you wanna use these keywords in your meta titles and your meta descriptions one time and use it in your page content three times. So I'll get into that. Now, this is something businesses need to do. They need to be able to pivot from providing goods uh, as a service. So say you're a coffee shop and you provide coffee, you need to be able to pivot to selling them online. So this is an example of Google Ads. So this is Keyword Planner within Google Ads. When you do your keyword research, so say, let's use, let's use Poor Coffee Shop as an example. Uh, I just searched Coffee Shop and this is uh, geo-targeted within Luzerne County. And as you can see, Coffee Shop has a very high search volume, but low competition. But you wanna be able to, if you're selling online, focus your keywords, your, use your focus keywords uh, to enhance that. So here we have buy coffee online, buy coffee beans online, et cetera, et cetera. And so doing keyword research and practice here, as I showed earlier, you could use Google Ads Keyword Planner, or you can use Amazon. So uh, talked about Amazon earlier, but you can use it to your advantage locally. So whatever products you sell, you could see this drop down here. Whatever product you sell, you can put in this bar and it will give you keyword ideas to use for whatever page you're trying to optimize. That's a nice little hack that I learned in my uh, SEO. Uh, comings and goings. So now applying keyword research to your website. A meta title is the page heading that shows up in search engines. So this is on Google. It's the blue link and it shows search engine optimization experts and services for NX2. And this is within WordPress. So this is a Yoast 
SEO plugin. It just makes things easier. It's something you can add to your website and it makes it entirely easier. And you have green bars here that tell you it's optimized. Uh, so you have the title and the description and the description shows under the meta title and the search results. Now, you might be saying, okay, well, this is your meta description, but Google is pulling something different here. Sometimes Google, if it's relevant to the search and what someone searches on Google or Bing, it will pull a paragraph or a little snippet from the page instead of what you wrote as it finds it more relevant. And that's something that doesn't hurt. It, it helps you if, it, if it's within the copy on the site. Now you want to be unique with your with your products and with your description. So you want to write unique meta titles, unique meta descriptions, and unique product descriptions. And going back to the coffee example, uh, here we have Death Wish Coffee, and here are two different products. We have pumpkin coffee and we have instant coffee, and their just their product descriptions on the page are completely different. They don't duplicate anything and it's completely unique. So you want to make sure everything on your site isn't duplicated because Google will penalize you. Uh, it is not a, a good ranking factor. Uh, you'll be moved and manually penalized by Google for this. And something else you wanna do is optimize your images with unique alt text. So alt text basically tells Google in a word form what the image is. So you want to make sure that is optimized as well. And with that, I'll hand it over to my partner, Jeff, and he will go over local SEO. All right. Thanks, Michael. All right. So local SEO, um, definitely an important thing you want to focus on, whether you're doing e-commerce or not. Um, if you're selling, you know, nationally or internationally, uh, there's some different things you want to do, but with local, and Mara did go over a part of this, so thanks, Mara, for, for touching on a lot of um, local SEO elements in terms of directories. But um, just to get right into it, a local SEO is critical for small businesses that are looking to mainly sell their products or services in and around their local area. Now, like I said, if you do have a national business, this is still something you might want to focus on, even if it's just for part of your site for, for some pages. Um, the goal of a, of a local SEO strategy is for your business website to display as highly as possible in the organic Google and Bing rankings when a user searches for your product or service in your local area, as well as having your website show up in the Google local pack and the Bing local pack. And you might be wondering why I mentioned Bing in the same sentence as Google. Uh, Bing's market share is gradually increasing. It's up to about 33% of all U.S. internet searches. So it's definitely not a good idea to completely ignore this search engine. A lot of people do that. Um, there are some statistics that say 92% of all organic traffic is generated through Google. And that is true. But 30, the 33% number comes into play when you talk about paid and all of Bing's uh, partnerships and networks. So it's a pretty expansive network. So those, those are definitely the two majors. Uh, beyond those two, Yahoo is a distant third and then everything else comes after that. All right, so just to get in a little bit into on-site optimization, uh, there's on-site and off-site optimization when it comes to local SEO or, or SEO in general for that matter. Uh, with on-site, I just wanted to touch on that briefly because um, Michael did get into that, uh, but your website must be properly optimized for the towns and local areas that you want your website to rank for. Uh, this includes content optimization and some other SEO methods. Um, and then a few major online listings should be claimed, verified, and optimized. We should at least have a presence on dozens, if not hundreds of others, if possible. Uh, so the first thing you definitely want to take care of is that on-site element. And then we get into uh, off-site, which by far the most important thing you could do is Google My Business. Uh, setting up your Google My Business listing is not only the most important thing, in my opinion, uh, for off-site optimization, but overall local SEO uh, strategy. So the good news is it's a free tool, helps, uh, helps your customers find your location and gives you better search visibility. Uh, Google My Business posts can be used to communicate with customers and it also allows you to encourage reviews of your business along with the ability to actively respond to reviews. 
And another thing I'd like to mention in addition to that is Google My Business posting, which is not super popular right now. Um, it's kind of on par with um, social networks and, and, and Facebook and Twitter and tweets and things of that nature. So normal people are not really, you know, reading these, these posts too much yet, but it is growing. And I think it's a great way to communicate with your customers, especially when they find your, your business through a local Google search. Uh, a good example of it is right now during COVID-19, a lot of um, savvy business owners have put up postings about their uh, business being open or closed or the avail availability of their, of their products or services. So uh, Google My Business posting, I think, is ex not something to ignore as well. And then claiming and optimizing this listing, like I said, it's probably the mo most crucial element of your overall local SEO strategy. And then next slide, Michael. Okay, and then, so we also recommend claiming your Bing places for business listing along with your Yelp business page. Now those two along with Google are probably the three most important you're gonna wanna claim and verify and have properly optimized. Traditionally, for the last few years, or longer, they've been the ones that send the biggest ranking signals to the major, major search engines. Um, and that really is the place that most uh, customers are coming to, to look for reviews and information about your business. So some of the other, other major listings that are important to have uh, your correct business information listed on include Apple Maps Connect, Foursquare, MapQuest, and even the Better Business Bureau directory. Uh, there's, there's many others, but I think those are the the real important ones to have everything uh, correct on. And that gets into name, address, phone number, and URL. Those are really the, the big four things you wanna have consistent across the entire internet if possible. Uh, it's not really possible to get it on every little listing that's on the web, but as many as you can hit is great for your website and your business. Um, so yeah, beyond those major players, you're gonna wanna have it across at least dozens of others. The entire process sends important ranking signal, signals to Google and Bing and Yahoo and the other search engines like Michael mentioned, DuckDuckGo and Ask and a couple others. Uh, and that's then, that information is then used to properly rank your website locally, which is, you know, hopefully as, as high as possible. So this whole process uh, will hopefully lead you to getting more, more leads and more sales. So Michael, I'll turn it back over to you for the PPC and CSE section. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, so one thing, uh, one thing talked about earlier was uh, after you audit your site, you could grow it more with PPC and Google Shopping or any other shopping engine. So what is pay-per-click? It's they are advertisements that are typically charged on a cost-per-click basis when a search engine user clicks on your ad and then visit your website. So these are typically uh, advertisements on Google. After you search, it'll say ad next to it. Uh, a lot of people actually don't know the difference between the ad or organic. So we see traffic jumps sometimes. Uh, so one thing you can do if you want to get short-term results for your business, you can use pay-per-click. Uh, after you get your website set up, or if you're already in an established website, it it will only help. Uh, so the amount you're ultimately charged per click is based on an auction, which you bid on the keywords that you choose within Google Ads or Bing Ads platform. And as I said, it's great for short-term gains while you establish your organic rankings, which are free, as as said earlier. And it keeps your brands your brand slash products competitive over time. Another thing you can do is use a shopping engine. So it's more advanced delivery method. It uses Google Merchant Center, which if you already have an ads account, you can sign up for Merchant Center easily. Uh, you need to upload a product feed. So Dan talked about a prep list earlier, and you can use that prep list because it's important for building the, the feed within Google Merchant Center. Uh, you could reference what Dan had put earlier with that prep list and build a product feed for a shopping engine. So it's very, very uh, handy, and you can only give yourself more exposure if you want to spend the money for it. And if you build a WordPress site, they have 
uh, plugins that you can use like BigCommerce or WooCommerce and you just plug it right in and it, it does the legwork for you. So here are some examples. So this is a PPC ad. Uh, it has ad next to it. And this is a Google Shopping ad. Uh, these are some differences here. Obviously the shopping ad, you have pictures that are, that easily show the consumer what they're looking for. Or if your messaging is sound and conveys what they want in an advertisement, they'll click on the ad, which you have to pay for both. It's not free, but in the long run, maybe once you get your organic set up and you don't want to spend the money now, it's something you could look into later after everything's set up. So with that said, I'll hand it back. And if you have any questions, you can contact Jeff or I, and thank you very much. Awesome, thank you so much, uh, Mike and Jeff. That was a very in-depth look at you know SEO and what to do after we've gone through this process. So uh, thank you for that information and the whole ENX2 team for getting that together for us. Um, and we did run out of uh, time today for, for questions, but again, we did encourage you to interact with us in that chat. Again, we listed all of the contact information from our panelists today. And thank you all so much for being here with us. We really appreciate your time and your talent and, and sharing this with our business community. Um, and I just wanted to also remind everyone that, again, sharing your messaging with us at the Chamber um, and, and regardless of, of membership, we're encouraging everyone to interact with us. Tell us what you're doing in the business community. Join our mailing list um, just so that we can keep you updated on future events like these, which are open to everyone. We want to hear from you, share your story, and help you through this time in any way we can. Um, and just to keep everyone also in the loop on a few events we do have coming up. Uh, we have a Cinco de Mayo networking celebration on Tuesday um, that's going to feature three local restaurants showing us how to have a great Cinco de Mayo celebration at home. Um, and also we'll be coming back here next Wednesday for Wednesday Wisdom, which is a small business roundtable. And we're encouraging small businesses to, again, share your story with us, tell us what you're doing during this time, how you're being creative, how you're getting yourself out there. Uh, so we encourage you to interact with us again here back at Wednesday Wisdom um, on Facebook and also live on Zoom. Um, so thank you all so much for tuning in today. Thank you again to all of our panelists. Please connect with them. Any resources that they can give you that we can give you, uh, make sure to interact. So thank everybody. Hope you all stay safe and well and have a great day. Thank you.